Now, I appreciate there's probably a lot of you in the room looking at this product and have absolutely no idea what you're looking at. And uh, I don't mind that because I have some fellow Brits in the room with me today. And for me, this product has the most iconic marketing slogan ever. So where are the Brits in the room? Okay, I see some around there. If I asked you, do you like Marmite, what would your response be? No way. Yes. <laughs> Stop it. Stop Gross. It. Stop it. Disgusting. You either love it or you hate it. Okay, so <laughs> anytime you see Marmite on any adver ad advert on TV or whatever, people would always say they love it and they hate it. And that got me thinking, man, sometimes I love troubleshooting Wi-Fi networks. When a customer calls you and you go on site, they've been having this issue for a really long time, you can rock up with your sidekick, survey, whatever, take a look at what's going on and you fix the problem for them and you become a superhero. It feels fantastic. However, when you go on site and you try and find the problem, you're troubleshooting for a really long time and you can't figure out what it is and the customer's still unhappy, man, that really makes me hate troubleshooting Wi-Fi networks. Marmite comes in many different flavors and variations. You can get some Marmite tortillas, peanuts, peanut butter, macaroons. Uh, not so sure I'd want to be trying a Marmite macaroon, but hey, each to their own. That got me thinking, you know, it's very much like troubleshooting Wi-Fi networks. There's so many different things and combinations and varieties that could be a reason why you have an issue with your Wi-Fi network. And of course, at Echohal, we help you with many different ways you can identify these issues. It could be something to do with the coverage, it could be something to do with the security, it could be something to do with the configuration of the network, and you can use our tools in many different ways to find and identify those. But what I actually wanted to spend today talking to you about is a, uh, something that happened to me a few years ago for a project, project, and nothing will make you hate troubleshooting a Wi-Fi network more than a Wi-Fi network that you have been involved with the entire life cycle of that project, gathering the requirements, the pre-design, the on-site survey, the predictive modeling, API on a stick, deployment, validation, and then it has an issue. So let me talk to you about this project. This project was for a pretty large distribution center based in, in the UK. There's around 160 access points that were installed, two cable runs to each access point, so uh, lots of involvement with not just the design of the wireless, but also the cabling infrastructure, even the mounting, et cetera, et cetera. And this was a little while ago, so it was just 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. There was no, no 6 gigahertz involved. Many different kind of spaces, so lots of like racking aisles, open spaces, offices, uh, you name it, what you would kind of expect to see in a distribution center, it was there. So also lots of different client devices that we needed to support. It could be a printer, it could be an iPhone, it could be a Windows laptop, Android phone, you name it, we had to kind of support it here. So there were two levels to this distribution center and we went with multiple different types of access points and different types of external antennas to provide the coverage. So the two levels, and let me just talk you through some of the different types of access points and antennas we had here. So the blue access points that you can kind of see on the map there, that was more for like the low density areas where it was using integrated omnidirectional antennas, just kind of like the two by twos, like, like the not so important areas, like just transitional areas. The um, higher density areas for where the darker pink ones are, that was more like the office spaces, so typical like four by fours. And then there was a few spaces where it was quite high ceilings and gonna be like a pretty big congregation of people. So we went with access points installed in the ceiling with directional antennas pointing down. And then finally, the yellow ones, that was just for your traditional kind of like warehouse racking aisles. We were meticulous with this project. We didn't just do a predictive survey and, and a predictive design and turn up and do a passive survey. We did a full API on a stick to test out the different types of access points and antennas we were planning to deploy on site. Went on site, we did our measurements. This guy gets no more free marketing from me. <laughs> uh, measured from all the different access points and antennas. And we went and we gathered all of the data that we needed to to verify that the network was gonna intend to work how we planned it. 
We also did loads of client testing. So we gathered all of the different uh, devices that were going to be in use there, and we tested them with different variations of the configuration for the SSIDs, their coverage, and we were really happy. We were so happy with how it was going to work. We um, had great confidence with the design. We knew the devices were going to work, so we tested them. So we deployed the network. Deployed the network, we went back, and we validated it. We did a validation survey. Coverage looked really good, exactly how it was expected. And you probably don't believe me when you look at this thing. Oh, hold on a second, Matt. I can see a few areas where it looks a little bit, a little bit gray, a little bit dodgy. Don't worry. That was just like a fridge space. It was like a cold room. They just, they didn't care about Wi-Fi being in there too much. They just wanted to see if they had it. So coverage is looking good. Everyone's happy. Client devices tested, working fine. We was, ever, we was really involved with the physical installation of the project as well. So we worked very closely with the installation team, managing that aspect of it. And we were really proud. Like, we were so happy with how the network was deployed, how it was working, how it was configured. We even used some of the Axeltex enclosures, because there was a couple of uh, areas of the distribution center that we was uh, a little bit worried, uh, potentially around you know, some of that moisture. So we protected them with a nice enclosure. The, um, Warehouse racking aisles, the antenna was deployed. The top right hand corner, you can see that was like the simulated coverage we were expecting just to provide one AP and antenna down the aisle. However, the bottom right hand corner, that's actually val the validation. And you can see, you know, depending on how f stocked the rack is, you might have a bit of bleed. It might do one aisle, might do two aisles, might do one and a half aisles. It really depends on the inventory. But there's also the large kind of like meeting spaces. And we had access points installed. I think it was about eight meters height with the antennas pointing directly down. But you know, everything was working really well. Everything was being covered nicely. And it was great. And we gave ourselves a nice big pat on the back. We were super happy with how it all went. And it was great. We was like, oh, this is a job well done. This is really good. Yeah. Then you get the phone call. And I think this may be one of the worst issues someone can call you up and say is that they're having problems with the Wi-Fi and it's intermittent devices getting dropped off the network. So I was like, okay, Mr. Customer, what, is it happening to every single device? Is it happening to every single person? And they said, you know what, it's not every single device, but it is happening to everyone. And I was like, okay, what device is it? Oh, okay, Windows laptops. I was like, I could have I probably guessed that. And I was like, you know what, actually, I think I, would, I know someone that can help with that problem. <laughs> but all, all joking aside, the, um, the CEO was getting very unhappy. I'm applying a lot of pressure to the IT team because he was noticing these drops and the users were complaining about these drops. And the reputation now of this Wi-Fi network was that it didn't work very well. And the applications that were really noticed for this was voice and video calls, which was happening on these Windows laptops. But they was also doing RDP sessions. And if you have a drop on the network and you're on an RDP session, you notice it, because it just completely kicks you off. So they were getting very unhappy. So I went back and I looked over the survey file, and I was like, damn, I know that we've got coverage everywhere. I'm not concerned about that. I know that what we designed was good. APs were installed perfectly. Everything was working as we expected it to. So what was going on? And I don't know about you if you've ever been in this situation before, but what you do in this situation is you call TAC. You're like, OK, I need some help. Uh, what, what could possibly be going on here? Because I'm sure it's not an RF issue. And call TAC. Do you know what they asked for? Packet capture. Yeah, of course they did. They said, can you go on site and do a packet capture? And we said, sure, no problem. Went back on site, did a packet capture with a sidekick. We was capturing from the client level. And they did a packet capture from the access point level. And we got some of the client devices. And you know what? We actually captured the problem. We captured the intermittent issue, the device dropping off the network. Fantastic. Send this to TAC. They're going to find the problem. Job done. Send it to TAC. They had a look. They couldn't figure it out. Or we couldn't figure it out. I was like, well, what is going on? Though? Why are these devices still dropping off the network? And like, the CEO is getting super unhappy now. It's been weeks have gone by, if not months. And there's still problems with the Wi-Fi. <clears throat> and I, like I said, I was super confident with the design. I know we had RF everywhere. We wanted to have RF, primary coverage, secondary coverage. Everything was good. So I was sure it must be something else to do with the, with the network. It has to be. And it made me think about how the network was potentially configured around our SSIDs and with around like what security had been implemented. 
We had the main corporate SSID. I refer to this as like the all bells and whistles SSID. Everything that you would want that to be configured was configured. Five gig only, strongest authentication, radius, uh, all the fast roaming amendments, 11 RKV, uh, management frame protection or protected management frames turned on. And we tested this, like we knew this was working. We tested all the devices, they connected, and it was all good. So what I wanted to do is what I would refer to as a, a vanilla SSID. So we spun up a vanilla SSID where we had nothing fancy turned on at all. We just turned it on with minimum configuration enabled. And what we did is we started to connect devices, and then we would just monitor over time and then turn one thing on at a time to see what that issue could be. The nice thing about the analyzer application is that you can see this information if you do a packet capture and look in Wireshark and stuff like that, but just by firing up analyzer, we could see on the SSIDs are things like this enabled, amendments, manager frame protection, et cetera, et cetera. You might be asking yourselves, like, why should I use some of these amendments on my SSIDs? So first of all, let's just talk, let's just talk about a couple why you want to use these. So 11R, or fast BSS transition, <laughs> The reason why you'd want to have this enabled is because if you're using a radius authenticated SSID, it can take a little while for your client device to get authenticated because you've got to go client device to the access point, access point to controller, controller to radius server, verify credentials, and then back in the other direction. And depending on where your radius server is, this could take a really long time. It could be a few hundred milliseconds, it could be a few seconds, and each, if you don't have this enabled, each time your client device roams from an access point to another access point, it's gonna do a full re-authentication using that radius server. So here is an example of an SSID that had .1x configured, and it didn't have 11R enabled. On, that ro on the roam, you can see there it took 370 milliseconds, and you're thinking, Matt, that doesn't sound like a super long time. However, if there is a delay of over 150 milliseconds, you will notice cracks in conversation. So there's a chance if you was roaming and took 370 milliseconds, you would notice that. And the difference when you turned on 11R, the exact same roaming path, same access point, same client device, that roaming time went down to 50 milliseconds. <laughs> yeah, so you, wanna, you want to use it uh, if, if you can. But that can be a reason why it could cause your devices some compatibility issues. So it's one of the things that I, I had a hunch around like what, what the potential issue could be. And I was like, oh, it could be 11R, but also it could be 802.11w, PMF, MFP. Uh, I don't judge, call it what you want. Um, <clears throat> the reason why you want to have this on, and you wouldn't believe that JD and I didn't speak at all about our presentations before our presentations, and we so happened to be back to back, because I want to show you now an example of when we took a rogue device into our environment, lab environment, where we got uh, an access point, a rogue device connected to the network, and we had spun up a SSID that had the same uh, SS name and the same authenticate uh, password as the legitimate corporate network. This is the coverage from that device in, in the office, and you can see it can be heard from everywhere. Very. Uh, interesting choice of channel that it decided to use. Uh, but you can be heard everywhere. So the sole purpose here is that we wanted to basically try and get legitimate users off the corporate network and connect to our rogue honeypot device. So you see here in the analyzer application, management frame protection is disabled. And what we did here, thanks to WLPC Phoenix 2024, we got one of these flipper devices, and we uh, did a de-authentication. At a broadcast attack, and what actually happened is we were able to successfully get the legitimate corporate devices off the network, and then when they reassociated, they connected to the Honeypot AP. Not ideal, not something that you would want to happen in your network. So what we did to test this is we actually enabled MFP in this scenario, and now when we did that same deauthentication attack, our devices stayed connected. So in an ideal scenario, we want to use these fast roaming amendments. We want to use manager frame protection. However, I come back to the vanilla SSID where we was just turning one thing on at a time and then monitoring to see if we could find out what that problem was. And it just so happened that when we enabled manager frame protection 
on the SSID, that is when the devices start to have these intermittent connectivity issues on the network. So we ended up just leaving that disabled, and since then, no issues with the Wi-Fi. CEO has grown a beard, it's been that long. Uh, but if you ask me, hey, what was actually really causing the problem? I don't know, and I don't care. It's, it, <laughs> it worked, it wasn't working for a really long time, and then since then, we've not had one issue, one problem, whether it's a client device thing, a vendor thing. Like I said, I don't know, I don't care. So what is the moral of this story is sometimes our client devices lie. And during this process, we were doing other things as well. Like during the packet capture, we were capturing the association request frame to really kind of figure out and understand what the different client devices were capable of to know that it would be supported on the network. And that really kind of like gave us the idea around this new client analysis feature that we'll be launching soon. We spoke about this in Prague last year. And what this is going to do is when you have an issue with a particular device, what you can do is just bring it close to the Psychic 2, and it's going to automatically start troubleshooting that device for you, find out exactly what it's capable of doing, compare it to the way that you've configured your network, and then you can kind of see maybe some things that you want to try and turn on, try and turn off, a little bit like what we did with the approach for the uh, vanilla SSID. OK. I wasn't sure where I'd be at with my presentation. I do, have some, I do have time for one more example, so I'll skip this one. Another issue that uh, we came across kind of recently was, again, a scenario where there was a complaint about devices randomly dropping off the network. And here is just a simple office deployment. There's two access points. Uh, the APs are using dual 5 gigahertz. There's devices in the office around this location. They were complaining that they were getting randomly kicked off the network. So we went on site. We did a survey with the sidekick, walked around. Looking at the coverage here, the coverage looks good. Looking at the secondary coverage again, it looks good. Don't see any issues here from a coverage perspective. Now then, if we take a look at channel interference, yeah, I can see there's a little bit of channel interference down here, but three, am I too concerned about that? Not so much. Where Wi-Fi works is layer one and layer two. So when you do a survey, I think it's really key not just to understand you know, the coverage from your access points, channel interference, et cetera, et cetera, but I also really want to understand is, is there any other devices out there that could be causing me a potential issue on the Wi-Fi? So now I take a look at this visualization, and we take a look at the spectrum, and now you can see there's this transmitter over here that can be heard, and this access point down here on channel 153 as well. And you can see this little spike. Yeah? Now, I don't know why the access point hadn't changed its channel when it heard this, but it was super loud. Maybe it wasn't configured to be able to change channels during a certain time, or it was on a static channel configuration, but what was actually happening is because there was this non-wireless device operating on 5 gigahertz on the same channel, it was causing this intermittent connectivity. Sometimes the AP could broadcast, and if client devices were connected to that access point on that channel, then there would be a potential reason why they couldn't connect. So from walking around with the psychic, who was able to identify this, reconfigure the AP to not use that channel, so it turned out that little narrow band spike that you see there, it was actually a... Um, sensor that's by like a door, so a security sensor, and it was causing this narrowband interference on 5 gigahertz. And this was quite recently, it was back end of 2024, so these devices, they're out there, and if you do a survey and you don't have a device that has a spectrum analyzer, you'll quite literally miss half the information that you want to know when you're doing a site survey. Okay, now I'm redone. Oh, by the way, if you're interested in a trying some Marmite. I did bring some with me, so come and see Stu at the back. We've got a little box of, of Marmite if you'd like to try some. <laughs> Thank you.